Since our last sketch covered small babies, let's move to the other end of the spectrum, big babies. And for that, we'll head over to the biggest trees we know, the redwoods. The biggest fetuses we know are those that are macrosomic. The definition of macrosomia is a birth weight of greater than 4,000 to 4,500 grams, depending on which cutoff you use, which is roughly 9 to 10 pounds. Unfortunately, there's no strict weight cutoff that's universally used for this definition. We'll represent macrosomia with this 4,000-pound redwood tree to remind you of the lower end of the cutoff. To be technically correct when you're speaking of these big babies, if they're still in utero and they're measuring above this threshold on ultrasound, you should say that they have suspected fetal macrosomia, since you technically don't know exactly how much they weigh at birth. On the wards, however, macrosomia is often used to refer to the estimated fetal weight while the fetus is still in utero, which is what we'll do here in this sketch for simplicity's sake. Another way to describe large babies is large for gestational age, or LGA represented by this bigger than 90% of trees sign. This means that the fetus's birth weight is above the 90th percentile for their gestational age. The main difference between LGA and macrosomia is that LGA considers the baby size in comparison to the typical size distribution at that gestational age. So there's no single weight cutoff like with macrosomia. Other than just constitutionally larger infants from larger parents or barring genetic disorders, the main pathway towards fetal macrosomia is maternal hyperglycemia, represented by this pregnant woman eating candy. Because glucose crosses the placenta, maternal hyperglycemia in turn causes fetal hyperglycemia, represented by the squirrel who stole some candy for herself. Since maternal hyperglycemia is so linked to fetal macrosomia, it makes sense that fetuses of mothers with diabetes specifically type 2 diabetes mellitus and gestational diabetes, are more likely to be macrosomic. The fetus responds to these high glucose levels by producing more insulin, growth hormone, and insulin-like growth factor, which cause both the fetus to grow larger and also increase deposition of fetal adipose tissue in the shoulders and abdomen. So why do we care if a baby is big? There are many fetal and maternal risks that come along with big fetuses. Fetal risks increase proportionately with fetal size, with marked increases of injury seen above 4,500 grams. The main fetal risk is some form of birth trauma, most commonly shoulder dystocia, which is when the baby's shoulders get stuck behind the maternal pubic symphysis, just like how this van is getting stuck trying to drive through this tree. Data has shown that if the fetus weighs between 4,500 and 5,000 grams, that around 7% will have shoulder dystocias. If the fetus weighs more than 5,000 grams, then that number leaps up to 15%. Shoulder dystocia is an obstetric emergency. Babies can asphyxiate and die during a shoulder dystocia, usually through cord compression. We'll remind you of this devastating consequence with the umbilical cord-looking rope being compressed by the van's trunk door, which is making the driver blue in the face, 